for me, uh, the Viva Cananda was so entirely different from our, anything that, that we had known in America. That I, I had heard all my life, it seemed to me, of power and repose. And the first time I had seen it was, it was in the presence of Swami Vivekananda. Well, I went to the Vedanta house and I sat on the, on the front seat so that I wouldn't miss anything. And Swami entered by a side door and immediately I knew that there was something extraordinary about him. He, he, he was very unassuming, very, very calm, and, and uh, entered and took his place at the, on the rostrum. But there was something about that presence that you couldn't take your eyes off of him, and he fascinated you. And as he sat in the chair, his head was the most perfect that I'd ever seen, and it was perfectly poised and power seemed to emanate from it. I, I was fascinated. And he looked like a living Buddha. He looked entirely different from, from any personality that I'd ever seen. And then he, he rose to speak. And the voice w was, was extraordinary. It was mellow, <coughs> resonant, but of great purity. And as he spoke, veils just seemed to fall from your eyes because he gave you an entirely different, um, a different impression of personality. He gave you an entirely different impression as he, as he was speaking of the relationship of the individual to the divinity. And I remember as I, as I looked at him, it seemed to me that there was an ocean of consciousness back of him. And in some way, there was no limit to this personality. His awareness was in the vision within. And as we see people, we see them, uh, we see them limited because their awareness is entirely uh, connected with the body. With Swami Vivekananda, it seemed to me that there was this ocean of consciousness back of him, and in some way that focused and flowed through his words. As Vivekananda was speaking, the purity of that personality was so great, it just seemed to me divinity was reflected in it. It was as if his mind was a limpid lake that was reflecting a, a divine light. Swami Vivekananda, uh, the sense of I had expanded into something that was vast and deep and very, very pure and very, very powerful because it just penetrated within and it aroused something within that, that never was there before. Some place he has said that you never see without you anything that isn't within. And I think perhaps his great power was that, that he perceived the divinity in all form. And he perceived it to such a degree that he awakened it in his, visit, in his, his uh, listeners as he was speaking. Other people that I'd heard uh, on the pulpit and all that sort of thing, and I'd heard about the best, they speak from a, a standpoint of faith that they have faith in a divinity and all that. And I began to realize that this man was speaking from, a, from something that he was living, that every word he uttered came from a state of, of realization, such a realization as the ordinary person can't imagine, you'll see. A month before uh, I came in contact with Tommy, he wrote to Miss McLeod, I don't know whether you know who she is, yes. And he said, more and more, I feel that I am being drawn into nirvana. 
and he spoke of it as the strange and the wonderful. And two years later, he passed away, and Sister Naledita said that more and more in his presence, she felt that she was standing on the shores of an ocean of luminous light.